Hello there students and welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 6. This is the module on acid and base reactions. To start things off in the first video we're going to just have a little bit of a look at nomenclature or the naming of inorganic acids and bases. So for the first uh, of these videos we just want to really set up the whole context of acids and bases and so to do that we're going to look at some of the nomenclature or the way in which we name uh, different compounds and also the properties. Now hopefully this first section will be pretty much a um, uh, opportunity for you to recall some of the work that you did in the junior years um, and some of it will also link to some things that we looked at in the year 11 course but primarily what we're interested in here is just the uh, ways in which we go about naming these different types of acids now I think it's probably worth you not necessarily downloading the entire book because the red book is massive um, but the system that we're using is a system known as the IUPAC system, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And it is basically the system that is used by all chemists around the world to uh, ensure or at least to decrease ambiguity and try and ensure that we're all communicating about the same compounds in the same way. Again, the ones that you see listed here are just a very small number of the acids that are, um, exist, but we will be um, looking at most of these because they're the most common ones. Uh, and it'll give you a little bit of an idea of what happens. I think probably the most important thing at this stage to set up in terms of acids is if we look at this first one, uh, which is hydrogen chloride. So a compound made from hydrogen and chlorine. Um, but when this is in aqueous solution, it becomes, uh, the solution is acidic. And we then refer to it as hydrochloric acid. Now, one of the most interesting things about this is that the hydrogen and the chlorine are held together in a covalent bond. Uh, and that's why we would refer to this substance as hydrogen chloride. But in solution, what happens is the electrons which were being shared in this bond will uh, actually be taken by the chlorine. We will say that in the solution it ionizes. Now, this is one of the important um, characteristics of many of these acids is that they become electrolytes in solution. They are ions and therefore will conduct uh, an electric uh, current. When this ionizes, of course, what you get are two ions, an H+, plus and a Cl minus. Now the most important thing to look at here is the H plus because the H plus is uh, in its most common isotope of hydrogen, uh, hydrogen one, is a simple proton, just a proton. There's no neutron because there's the mass is one, so that's the proton. And of course there's no electron because the electron has now gone to the chlorine and formed the anion. So the cation is actually a proton. Now this idea of acids um, containing a proton in solution is a very important one and we're going to look at how the definition of acids have changed over time further in this um, series of videos but for now this is an important concept just to introduce here to go through uh, each of these and I won't write them all down but I will go through them all for you the combination of hydrogen and fluorine forms hydrofluoric acid the next one is sulfurous and Old people like me do not like having to spell sulfur or sulfuric or sulfurous with a F rather than a PH, but it is the correct way of doing so. Um, uh, the next one is sulfuric acid, uh, nitrous and nitric. And then the last two I'm sure you're also familiar with. Well, the second last one, carbonic acid this is a key uh, acid that's present in um, uh, carbonated soft drinks and the last one is phosphoric acid as far as the properties are concerned um, if you think about lemons uh, lemons contain an acidic uh, solution or acid in solution and they have a sour taste uh, some of these acids particularly some of the very strong acids 
are corrosive to the skin and acids change color in indicators. And you've probably most commonly dealt with things like litmus, which is red, uh, universal indicator, which is often a reddish orange color in acid solutions and so on. But we'll look at a few more indicators and some different sorts of colors uh, as we go through this unit. They ionize to form this donatable proton, and this is a really important point that we're gonna come back to later on, and acids neutralize bases. In the same way, we can go through the um, nomenclature or the naming of our bases and their properties and worth uh, just putting these side by side so you get a chance to um, compare the properties of acids and bases. So where acids have a sour taste, bases have a bitter taste. And of course, we don't taste them in order to confirm that. Some of them, because of their corrosive nature, would be very dangerous to us if we did that. Um, Bases also form electrolytes in solution. They change color of indicators more often to blue. They have a slippery feel, um, soapy kind of substance. In fact, bases are used to make soaps. Uh, they will accept a proton. And again, this is a concept that we're going to come back to a little bit later and they neutralize acids. So some of the common ones are the hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, probably the most common one that you'd be familiar with uh, on the top of that list. Uh, but we have calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, sodium carbonate. So this one is sodium carbonate. And the one below it is sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate and ammonia. So this is just a little introduction to some of the naming conventions that we use for acids and bases. These are the most common ones and you really need to keep a little table somewhere that you can keep referring to until you get them set in your mind. Uh, it's one of those exercises that's really worth doing because we're going to spend a lot of time looking at acid-base reactions in this topic. And thanks for watching.